Hi, everyone. Um, I was I just realized I didn't have my screen sharing, so I apologize for no music. Um, but I want to welcome everyone for joining us today. We have a really special webinar with Thomas. Um, Thomas is the specialist on Seychelles. Um, he is part of the team of Hummingbird. Hummingbird Travel is a DMC with over 30 years of experience in the Indian Ocean. We have three um, parts of this series. We have three webinars. Um, so one on Seychelles, next week on Mauritius and the following week on the Maldives. So I hope you'll be able to join us for all of them. Thomas, I wanna thank you for your time um, and please take it from here. Thank you very much and uh, a good good morning, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Uh, what time is it over where you are? No, it's the evening, isn't it? No. In Brazil, it's 2 p.m. and in Mexico, it's noon. Ah, okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, uh, Thomas from London speaking and yeah, very happy to be here and to talk to you about the Seychelles. It's my... Um, well, we're an Indian Ocean specialist and we sell four destinations, which are Maldives, Mauritius, Seychelles and Sri Lanka. And I think the Seychelles is my personal favourite of, of the four. Uh, it's got a nice mixture of great beaches on really spectacular islands, but the islands are a bit bigger. Uh, there's a bit more to do on them than perhaps you would find in the Maldives. So if you uh, get tired of the beach and you want to do a bit of exploring, then... Uh, there's room to do that in the Seychelles, which is really nice. So, um, yeah, I'm a big fan. I've been uh, been quite a few times now, lucky me. We've actually got our office space there. Um, so we've got an office uh, on the second island of Pralin, uh, but we also have a team on Mahe for all the transfers and excursions. Um, so this is the Seychelles. And the, cent the, so the main area that most clients will be traveling to and staying in is the inner granite islands up here in the top right hand corner of the map and Mahi in particular that's the the main islands uh, where the capital of Victoria is and it's where quite a few of the properties are based um, it's the most densely populated islands it's the largest um, and it has the capital so it's also where the international airport is so when you fly into Seychelles you fly into Ma Mahi uh, roughly where my uh, little red uh, dot is positioned, that's where the airport is. And then from there, you take your, your transfers uh, to wherever you're staying. So if you're staying on Mahe, then it's a car transfer, we'll pick you up and take you. Uh, or then if you're going on to someone on, on Pralin, the second island where our office is based, uh, you would either take a, an SA Shells flight or a Cat Coco ferry, and we'll have a car to meet you at the other side. Uh, La Digue, it's a ferry. And then you have uh, helicopter services. You can get to North Island, uh, Fregat, Six Senses of Passion, uh, Silhouette Island. There's a there's a, a ferry service that goes back and forth. Um, so you've got a few options there. You've also got Dennis Island. You get a helicopter too, or you can take a flight. Um, so they, yeah, there's quite a, quite a few islands you can visit very easily from Mahe as your kind of launch pad. And then further afield, those are the inner granite islands, those are where you'll be doing most of your bookings or staying. Then further afield, you do have these really, really remote outer coral islands. So these are inner granite, they're granite rock. Uh, they're sometimes up, up to a thousand meters high and they're quite spectacular. Then as you go further out to um, Dennis and, and then beyond to the, the sort of the next uh, outer coral islands, they are flat coral, low-lying coral islands, a bit more like what you would find in the Maldives. So, for example, De Roche, that's where there's a Four Seasons property, Four Seasons De Roche here, and that's uh, a nice outer coral island. You, so you would fly, it's quite a long way, so you would fly from Mahi, uh, take a one-hour flight, roughly, and end up at De Roche and land, land on the island and enjoy your holiday there. And, and the advantage to the outer coral islands is you have some amazing marine life and amazing coral as well. So the, the, the real uh, selling point for me is, is the nature in the outer coral islands is really exceptional. It's very untouched. Uh, and fairly recently, I was lucky enough to visit the Alphonse group here. I went to a stay at Alphonse Island. I also went on to visit uh, Astove 
and I went to the Cosmolito Elbow. So they're, they're really, really remote, as you can see from uh, how far out they are on the map. And so to get to Alphonse is an hour flight. And that's when um, most people go. It's, I would highly recommend Alphonse Island. It's really nice. It's only about 80 rooms. It's a bit like a fishing lodge. Uh, but it's also, if you're not interested in fishing, it's a great place to go snorkeling, diving, and enjoy amazing marine life, dolphins, uh, manta rays, stingrays, um, turtles, sharks, everything is there and it's really good, good for water sports and water activities, uh, as well as being a great, really sort of simple, but good sort of five-star property. And then for, for people who are like really hardcore into nature and fishing, you can go out a bit further and they're like the Cosmolito has a, an eco camp with eight uh, sustainable uh, shipping containers that have been turned into like these, uh, these these lodges um and so you stay in the shipping container but the container but they're fully air conditioned and it's a great place to go fishing uh, i mean I, I was staying with a fishing group fisherman group and they caught like 100 gts in a, in a week and just had the best time so it's almost like a, a safari well the, it's, it's run by a company called blue safari so it's kind of like a luxury safari experience so it combines quite well with africa um, so people who maybe have been on safari in Africa, they then go on to the Maldives and do the blue safari, maybe at uh, Cosmolito, Melido or Alphonse. Otherwise, uh, that's probably going to be a more niche and most of your bookings, yeah, again, are going to be in that Mahe Atoll for your honeymooners and your families. It's going to cater the best for them. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's in the Indian Ocean. It's north of uh, Madagascar, not far off, uh, off Africa. It's an African country. So just zooming in now on the main island of Mahe. So again, here's the airports, clients fly in, um, serviced by, you know, all your, all your major carriers, um, Emirates, you've got Turkish. Um, so combined quite well with a trip to Turkey as well. Uh, I, I've done that one for Istanbul, which is really nice. Um, but uh, yeah, via the Middle East, Dubai, or you can add it on uh, via South Africa. Um, or uh, through Nairobi. Um, so that's quite nice. And then, yeah, get into Mahe, be met by a car on arrival, and there's lots to do on Mahe. So it's a really uh, fantastic capital um, island with the capital of Victoria, main city here. Um, you've got a national park, which is Mont Seychelles National Park. You've got loads of beaches. That, uh, this is um, this beach on the north, this is Beauvallon Beach. It's quite famous, quite a few restaurants, quite a few resorts based here. Um, and then you've got lots of little private beaches all on the, along the West coast as well. Got the Bay of St. Anne here, which is a national park. And you also have Victoria, the capital, and there's a jetty that takes cat cocoa ferries go across from the Victoria jetty and they go across to the Prime jetty just around here. And that takes about an hour and 10 minutes crossing. And then you can access obviously Pral in the second Island, which is uh, quite big, but uh, noticeably quieter than than uh, Mahe. But there's some really nice properties on Parlin. It's very beautiful as well. Got an, a national park, Valley de Mer. It's really stunning. Nice for hiking and, and walking. It's got waterfall as well, and really nice beaches all all around. And luxury properties like Raffles and Constance de Maria are based here. And it's also a great, if you're staying on Parlin, it's great. You can get hop across to La Digue very easily. Uh, you could take a, a Transfer takes like half an hour uh, crossing uh, and then you can go to La Digue and, and explore La Digue by bicycle. So the thing about Seychelles is it's a great destination for island hopping because the island, this, those inner granite islands are close and they're easily accessible. So I've, I've covered the ferries. You can also um, pay to take a Air Seychelles flight. They run um, every sort of half hour and they take about 15 minutes to cross. So it's a very quick way of getting from Mahe to Pralin. The cost is about 135 euros per person per way. So it's a bit, a bit more expensive than the Cat Coca Ferry, which is uh, 65 euros per person per way, roughly. Um, so a bit more expensive, but a lot quicker and quite convenient. And then oh, oh, what else is on this map? Yeah, so Silhouette Island, that's, uh, that's home to Hilton Labris, which is a really good uh, affordable five star and good for families and it's a very beautiful island silhouette you get amazing views if you're staying on Beau Ballon Beach you get amazing views of silhouette island there and North Island very private this is just a private island with one resort on it um, 
probably the most luxurious, expensive resort in Seychelles. And uh, Six Senses Il Passion is on the island of Felicite, just here. This is uh, also the other really sort of exclusive luxury five star uh, property <clears throat> in Seychelles. So, key thing really to when to go. Um, you can, of course, go to Seychelles year round, but you might, might want to take into account the, the, the trade winds times. So, the, the key things to remember right now, we are in um, going through the southeasterly trade wind, which means uh, there is a wind blowing up from southeast, which is going to affect really more, more properties on Praline than it would on Mahe. So, if you're staying on a, a, a property along the southern coast of, of Praline, you are going to experience rougher seas, so not so good for swimming in. And you're also going to experience a bit more seaweed washing up on the beach. So it's only really going to affect properties on that southern, southern side of Praline. Uh, Mahe is a bit more sheltered, but you can see because of this kind of this shoe that juts out at the bottom of Mahe. So uh, the properties on the summer coast of Mahe are not so effective, but Praline a little bit more. Um, but it's a good time of year to travel. It's it's pretty dry. It's pretty. It's a bit cooler. It's about 25 C, which is quite nice. Um, so not too hot, but it's a it's quite a dry time of year, May to September. Um, so a good time to visit, and the prices are are, are a bit lower than they are over the peak season. Um, and conversely, so from October to April, the the winds change and they start blowing down from the north, and that will affect the northern sides of the islands, uh, so where the seas will be a bit rougher um, and not good, so good for swimming swimming in. And again, Praline takes the brunt of it, so those kind of northern beaches uh, are a bit more susceptible to seaweed and and uh, stronger stronger winds. And mid December sort of to February, which is the busiest time for Seychelles, is actually ironically probably the period where you're going to see the most amount of uh, tropical down downpours. Now, when it rains in Seychelles, it tends not to last very long, but it's quite heavy rain. So it'll be like an hour of like, boom, flash, flash flood for an hour, and then it will dry up and it'll be really sunny again. Um, and that, that happens usually, yeah, from sort of mid-December to February. But still, you know, that's when most people travel and they still get amazing weather. Uh, but you do get those downpours, um, you know, once or twice a day. Uh, maybe once in the morning and then no, uh, another sort of downpour uh, um, later in the afternoon. For me, I think the real sweet spot to travel to Seychelles, though, is that change of season time. So uh, around um, April, May, uh, when when the wind starts to change. So, yeah, I, I was there in uh, in April and I had amazing weather, very settled, very, very hot. Uh, it was really nice. And then again, like so September, uh, October time is is really nice as well um, that's it's a good time to go there it's, it's a real sweet spot for the best of the weather in Seychelles so zooming on on Mahe um, I picked out a few good properties that we sell quite a lot of uh, that are highly recommended and um, just pointed the, them out where they are on the map so let's start with Constance Ophelia which is up there up in the north towards the north of Mahe on the western coast and it actually straddles uh, uh, a sort of headland. So it has two beaches, one on the north side, one on the south side. So which is, it's, a, it's actually the largest property in the Indian Ocean. So um, it's very well stocked with facilities. And then going, coming down, uh, the further you south you get on the, on the western side of, of the coast, the more local it gets. Uh, you can see that there's quite a like, high proportion of um, resorts, restaurants. It's quite touristy up in the north here. But as you work your way down there, the west coast, the further you get away from uh, the busy sections of Mahi, it's it's actually very uh, very local, uh, quite quiet, and there's some really nice luxury properties like Anantara Maya and Four Seasons Mahi, uh, and they've added also Mango House there now, which is really really nice. So uh, some really nice properties in the south. Um, I also in this area here, you've got the uh, Moss um, Seychelles National Park, which is great for hiking. There's lots of different hiking routes. Uh, so for people who are a bit more into activities or even families, uh, some of the, the routes vary in difficulty. So if you're not a particularly fit person or you're bringing kids with you, there are routes uh, that even kids could do and have a really amazing time. And the, the advantage is you have amazing views over the whole of Seychelles. So um, we, do, we do recommend, and obviously our drivers can take you to the start of the route, sort out their tickets, and you see some amazing, beautiful um, 
sort of beautiful jungle, beautiful trees, nice trails, waterfalls, and then you get rewarded with amazing views. I, I did, um, when I was there, I did the easiest, uh, easiest route, which is really nice, it took about 40, 40 minutes to get to the top. Uh, quite gentle and very rewarding. And I, I thought I'd highly recommend that to, to anyone who's a little bit interested in, in doing that. Um, there's, there's, there's lots of different routes you can do. Victoria here, uh, the capital, uh, bustling little city um, with some nice local restaurants. Uh, that's one of the main reasons. And also the shops and the market. The market's very colorful and there's lots of nice trinkets to buy. Uh, but there's a really nice restaurant here called uh, Marie Antoinette, which is really, if you want to drink, eat local Seychellois food, um, it's a great place to visit. And it's also where the ferries take take off from. So you can take the ferries terminals off from there. And then Beauval on Bay, the uh, sort of uh, worth visiting and going for dinner here, maybe one of the resorts or, or some of the famous restaurants that's a Trader Vic's, which always has, is quite lively, which is quite nice. So yeah, Victoria, this is Victoria, the capital with a miniature Big Ben. It's really some of the, the British, uh, British history there, because it used to be a British colony. Before then, it was a French colony. And before that, it was a, a Portuguese colony. So it's got a bit of uh, a bit of colonial history. Um, and then, of course, it's it's uh, an African country. It's got a very colourful African feel. The music, the food. There's definitely that influence. Um, so it's a uh, it's a Creole culture, and um, that's yeah most obvious in the music and the food. You've got lots of marine parks. Um, all around to explore. So snorkeling, diving, great. You've got one of the world's smallest national parks, which is Moyen Island, and that's in the Bay of St. Anne, um, which is just opposite Victoria. And that's a, a tiny little island that was bought by uh, an eccentric Englishman who thought he was going to find some pirate gold. And he bought this island and he did find some pirate graves, but he didn't find the massive pool of pirate gold that he thought he would. But um, he Unfortunately, because he bought the island, uh, it meant it wasn't turned into a private resort island, so it was kept as a, a as his sort of private uh, home. And then he planted lots of trees, and it's now he's he's died now, but it's now been left as a sort of national park, so people can go there, enjoy beautiful nature, uh, see some of the the pirate graves that he discovered, and it's really stunning. It featured on a on a National Geographic program as one of the smallest national parks in the world, and one of the most beautiful. But yeah. Otherwise, um, Mont Seychelles National Park on Mahé, this is the kind of um, nature and, and um, you will see when you're, when you're hiking. So Mont Seychelles National Park is really, really nice. Um, that's where I did my trail. And you get these amazing views. You go through beautiful trees and see amazing plants and wildlife. And then you, when you get higher, you get these fantastic views over the whole island. And you've got uh, beautiful waterfalls. So there's, yeah, there's 12 different trails. Uh, you've also got lovely, um, Coastal walks like the Ants Major Trail as well, which is really, really nice. And yeah, Anantara Maya, luxury, all inclusive on Mahe, beautiful uh, rooms, villas with all, all quite high up as well. And that's a feature of, of Seychelles. You know, the rooms are quite high up. So they give you those spectacular views over the over the island. And that is something a bit different to somewhere like the Maldives, where you're you're kind of on sea level. Uh, in Seychelles, you're raised up quite high. It does mean, of course, that you're not directly on the beach. Some you're usually quite high up, so you have to walk down to the beach. But the advantage is you have those amazing views for sunrises and sunsets. And then you go down to the beach maybe for a dinner or wine or, or a massage. And it's serviced by a helicopter transfer as well. Uh, but this is the area in which it, it, it's in is uh, Ants Bolo, a nice local area, beautiful local beach. You'll see fishermen pulling uh their, their catches of the day up on the beach and it's quite yeah it's quite authentic uh nearby you've got forces mahe which has a lovely beach you can see as petit ans and it's a uh, quite a large property um with amazing rooms very very private um although technically none of the beaches on the main islands are private um because they're very hard to access for locals someone like the four seasons is basically private because there's only going to be guests there. It's impossible to access without going through the resort to get to it. So it's basically a private beach, but it's it's really really stunning. And the advantage against those rocks, you can do yoga you know, um, in the mornings or in the evenings. It's also got some ancient, uh, some old ruins from the colonial period uh, where they they serve food. It's got an amazing uh, tafanyaki restaurant as well, signature for Four Seasons. So that's a very good. But Anantaramaya and Four Seasons are great choices for your kind of luxury and guests. 
And I would say if they want a smaller, more boutique property, then go for an entire, an entire Maya. And if they want something larger and with a bit more going on, then Four Seasons is probably the best choice. If they're on a bit more of a budget, though, I think Pontus Ophelia, that's our best selling property in the whole of Seychelles. And it's really good for families and, and for everyone, really. Um, and it's, it's more affordable. It's got great facilities, uh, also a mahe. And uh, yeah, it's got this whole stretch of headlands. So that's the whole property. It's got a beach on the north and the south, uh, lots of facilities, um, great swimming, great water sports, starting with the junior suites here. And then you go onto the beach fillers with direct access onto the beach. Uh, lots of restaurants to choose between as well as including uh, beachside dining and it's got a great kids club as well so activities for kids well well catered for there so from Mah from Mahi we'll go to the second island of Pralin uh, which is the second largest uh, but quite considerably in terms of population quite considerably smaller and again you could take a cat cocoa ferry from the Victoria jetty on Mahi or you can take a, a Asa Air Seychelles flight and that will be from the international airport and you fly into Praline Airport, which is just roughly here, and we'll have our team waiting at the other side, and we'll take you through to transfer you to wherever you're staying. Uh, I pointed out a couple of popular resorts, which are, of course, con the other concerts property, Lemuria, and the Raffles, which is really nice. And then you have some uh, more affordable properties on the north, like Paradise Sun, and on the south, like Coco de Mer Black Parrot Suites, which are, which are really good as well. Um, you've also got yeah, the National Park Valle de Mer, which is beautiful. Yeah, if everyone who visits Praline, they need to visit Valle de Mer, I feel, and Anselatio Beach. Um, but Valle de Mer, yeah, it's really, really beautiful, amazing trees. It's home to the endemic black parrot, um, which is only found in Seychelles. And also, of course, the Coco de Mer tree and nut, which is a sort of national symbol of the Seychelles. Um, so we give tours around there. And we can provide, for those more interested, we can provide, obviously everything's private with us, with Hummingbird, uh, but we can provide a nature guide who can give you a bit more information um, on what you're seeing and um, and how the coca de mer nuts grow and how the trees grow and the, the, the different flora and fauna that you'll discover. And then on to Ancelatio, where we can do like really nice sundowner cocktails or like a beachside barbecue dinners. Um, that's all really nice. We can do that at Ancelatio. It's one of the most photographed beaches in the world. It does get quite popular though, so there are other beaches nearby. Ants Kerland Beach is a really nice locals beach, it's just around the corner, nobody goes there though, so um, that's, a, that's a nice one to explore as well, because uh, it's just not so well known about. And we do try and do this uh, as Hummingbird, we try and take you off the beaten track and give you experiences that maybe other people don't talk about or aren't so aware about. Uh, there's actually quite a lot to discover in the Seychelles. There's like quite a few secrets hidden away uh, that make you say it's a little bit extra special. Uh, for example, Curious Island, which is just opposite Raffles. Um, Curious is a really lovely island. It was actually at one point, it was a leper colony until the 1960s, uh, which doesn't sound too promising uh, into, for, for visiting, but it's, uh, yeah, it was abandoned in the 1960s. But because it was a, a leper colony for so long, it, uh, it, it basically was a protected island. And so there was no or very little human interference with the animals. And so it's a, a great spot for bird spotting. There's loads of um, rare and endemic birds uh, who nest on Curious. And also you've got the giant uh, tortoises and the giant turtles nesting on the beach as well. So uh, really, really beautiful, um, no development on the island. Um, so it's really nice for a day trip, especially if you're staying at the Raffles Seychelles because it's just opposite. Uh, Raffles, a, a five-star product again, um, one of the best located uh, hotels in, in the Seychelles for me, especially the views from the villas uh, for sunrises and sunsets are really spectacular. And you're looking back across over to Curious, uh, there's lots of uh, facilities, you've got some main restaurant areas here and here, uh, main pool bar area here, uh, lovely stretch of beach all, all the way along, very, very private, great swimming as well, went swimming um, in the lagoon just in front, it was really, really nice. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a really good property, um, at sort of that mid-range five-star level, and yeah, the views are just stunning. It also comes with a really good uh, kids club as well, great spa, so it's got, it's got very good facilities. Um, something a bit smaller though, a bit more boutique probably, is, is the Constance La Maria, which is the only uh, resort in the Seychelles with its own uh, golf course. 
Um, so it's in a really nice corner. It's quite close to Anselazio Beach. And it's actually quite, you can do a really nice walk from Le Maria to Anselazio uh, through uh, the countryside. And it takes about an hour. It's a really nice hike. And then you can go to Anselazio Beach. But yeah, really nice villas, very stylish. Um, and I got all that tiki uh, flavor to it. Lovely dining options right on the beach again. And the golf, the one of the most spectacular golf courses in the world uh, on, on, um, on Pralin Island. And um, obviously you don't have to be a guest at Constance to play golf here. You can stay at other hotels and come and still play golf, but it's easiest if you're staying at Constance Le Maria for sure. And from Pralin, you could then hop over to La Digue. Uh, it's just a yeah, half an hour boat journey. And it's, uh, oh, 15 minutes, sorry, 15 minute boat journey, uh, if the weather's good. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really nice property. It's mostly, there's no cars allowed on the island. So it's pedestrianized and there's, there's bicycles to hire. So most people will get bicycles. So we'll, we can sort that out. We'll have a guy waiting for you when you cross with a couple of bicycles, and then you can explore the island at your leisure. Uh, it's particularly nice if you cycle this is you arrive at the jetty here and you usually cycle down south to the Union Estate and then through there you access one of the nicest beaches in Seychelles at Ansource to Argent. Uh, for those who are feeling more adventurous you can hike up through the middle of the island and there's lots of really amazing beaches on the other side uh, that are very cool to explore. But yeah it's all about cycling around and having visiting the local, little local restaurants. Um, it's a great place for a day trip. You can of course stay here as well uh, but there, there are a few properties like the Ants, um, sorry, La, La Domaine de l'Orangerie, which I think I would really recommend. I think it's really nice. It's, uh, it's actually not far from the arrivals, really. It's just, uh, just here. Um, that's a really, really good property. Uh, and also some smaller guest house. But most of our clients, to be honest, they usually come here on a day trip if they're staying on Prani. Um, so as also Argent, yeah, one of my favorite beaches in Seychelles. It's, so you go through the Le Union Estate and it's, yeah, it's got this classic boulders Sort of behind the beach and there are a couple of really nice uh local bars as well so that's really nice and then up above you've got the eagle's nest uh which is great for bird watching and for hiking um so you can do that the the union estate uh it's kind of like a museum it's it was once a coconut plantation so you've got this kind of uh the history colonial vibes there um and that's quite nice to explore and and to uh, discover as well so then from La Digue, not far away, you've got uh, Felicité Island, um, which is a private island. It just has six senses or passion located on it. And that's, a, again, one of the best private islands you can find in Seychelles. Most clients who are staying at, uh, at six senses or passion will take a helicopter directly from Mahé. Uh, otherwise, you can get a boat uh, from Pralin. That's another option. But uh, it's really spectacular. We've got loads of nice beaches, uh, amazing views. Uh, great for kayaking and going around the island uh, and then of course that classic six senses very eco-friendly barefoot luxury um, amazing amazing nature and you've got some rooms that are closer to the beach and some rooms that are up more elevated with amazing views over the island So th those are some of the sort of top um, inner granite islands. I should also mention the Four Seasons de Roche, uh, the outer coral island I mentioned earlier. Uh, that is a, a flight yet to, to get there. And it's a, a bit more like a Maldives island. It, it's, it's, it's a low-lying coral, white sand, flat island. And this is really good for your marine um, excursions, activities, diving and snorkeling, and uh, easier to run because it's nice and flat as well. Uh, but it's very long and thin. Uh, and it has giant tortoise, it's very stylish accommodation, of course, being four seasons. And um, you also got the larger, larger villas that are well suited for families, um, three, four bedroom villas, um, loads of bird life. Um, you've got a whole um, center that's for, for nature and for, for the marine and bird life that's there. You can do surfing, so if you want to do yes, surf courses, they've got uh, instructors there, so you can do a surf school all, all week if you wanted. A good kids club, of course, and yeah, the Lighthouse Restaurant's one of my favourites um, on the southern tip of the island. Uh, really nice for a, for a sunset uh, cocktail and then a meal afterwards. 
and the main the main sort of beach bar is also very stylish. Um, but that's that, that often you can combine that with four seasons mahe. So if you've got plans of maybe wanted to do a twin center stay, then that works quite well. You can do four seasons uh, mahe and then fly onto four seasons derosh, and then you get a bit of bit of both of what uh, Seychelles has to offer in the Granite Islands and then the Outer Coral Islands. Uh, going back to the Granite Islands now, um, uh, La Briz, which is on Silhouette Island, is a really good option, especially for clients on a bit more of a budget. Uh, it's still a five star, but it's affordable five star. And uh, starting with the garden rooms that are quite affordable and going up to the beach villas and the Grand Beach villas. Uh, but Silhouette is actually quite a large island and La Briz is really the only resort on the island. Uh, there's some small guest houses at, near the arrivals, uh, which is just here. This is the jetty where guests arrive. But once you cross over this little river here and you enter the resort, you've got, you've got the whole island and it's huge to all to yourself. As, and there's loads of hiking trails and the nature is really amazing. Again, um, I, I did a few hiking trails and they were just spectacular. So really nice. And you can discover like little hidden beaches there as well. But it, the resort itself has one of the best beaches in Seychelles. It has a dive department, uh, really good diving and snorkeling, um, really good facilities. You've got a good choice of restaurants. Um, so these are the beach villas with, with, with pool direct access onto the beach. Um, this is the uh, th this is like the presidential villa at the end, right at the end, which is very very impressive. Um, and you've got the spa area as well, um, dive department. Um, highly recommend a Labriz for those on a budget. And then for a shorter stay, I think North Ham, this is in Beauvallon, which is, you know, the sort of busy, most sort of um, active area of Seychelles on, on Mahe, on the northern side of Mahe. Uh, Hilton North Ham is really good for, I think, for like one or two nights uh, to combine with a stay going on somewhere else. So that you can wander down to the Beauvallon area, to all the restaurants that are kind of all around here uh, and experience some of the the Seychelles one, nightlife, um, but then you've got amazing views looking out over the whole of Seychelles, out of the bay from the restaurant here, looking towards Silhouette Island, um, and it's really nice. The reason I would say probably maybe not longer than two nights is, is the beach is quite small, so this is really uh, the extent of the beach, and there's a little bit around the other side, but it's not the biggest beach, so I think it works really well as a shorter stay, and then you go on somewhere uh, that has a bigger beach, um, but for, for like something that is quite stylish. Uh, it's got a bit of history to it as well, because it's where Ian Fleming wrote one of the Bond movies. I think it's it's a really nice option. And they've, they've actually refurbished a lot of their villas as well. It's got a great spa. They, yeah, the views from the main restaurant towards Silhouette Island are really, really nice. Um, and, and actually, there is some quite good snorkeling uh, just, just, just from here, actually, um, just in front of the, the little beach. Uh, the snorkeling was pretty good. So uh, yeah, that's quite nice. Oh, and I've taken some pictures of my hiking snap. So that was on Silhouette Island. Uh, discovering a, like an old abandoned uh, plantation house in the in the middle of the forest that was really cool and then yeah some views over the the bay and I oh, this was my guide who's carrying a machete and yeah that's looking back from Silhou Silhouette Islands to Mahe um, which is really nice and then some of the little private hidden beaches that you'll discover that's what I liked about Seychelles is you can kind of discover things where maybe no one else has discovered and you found your own little oasis your own hidden beach and you've taken a picnic with you that's been supplied by the resort um, which is quite fun. So I, I, I do enjoy that. So that is a little summary on Seychelles. And um, does anyone have any, have any questions, thoughts, questions, concerns? Hi, Thomas. Thank Hi. you for, thank you for the lesson. It was really, really amazing. Um, there are a few questions here on the chat. So I want to begin with Larissa's question. Um, and she asked if you could go back and explain if there is a, a what is the difference in the seat categories at the Cat Coco's ferries? Please. Oh, yes. Yeah, you do. I, there isn't a great deal of difference. Um, I, you, know, you can pay for the business class and you can you can upgrade and it is just you get a better view, really. It's, it's all about the viewpoint. So the, the cheaper categories, you're lower down, you don't get such. Uh, a good view. Um, whereas, if you play for the the business class, then you're you're higher up, and uh, you get a you get a better better view out the window. Thank you. Um, another question regarding the winds from May to September. Um, do you mean that the wind is worse in the southern part of Praline, or only on the northern part of Mahi? Um, so, the yeah, the the winds. 
uh, let me just go back to the slide because uh, yeah, I, uh, so this is kind of key really, uh, just because it can affect where you can go swimming. Uh, the main reason um, I bring it up, yeah, I'm just. Sorry, what is it? Yeah, got it. Because I got the map there as well. I thought I'd just show. So yeah, the, the the winds from May to September. Uh, so the winds are blowing from the south. So that they're going to be hitting the southern sides of a province. So yeah. I would say there's a couple of properties that are really nice, but maybe not the best time to stay there. Like um, the Coco de Mer Black Parrot Suites are on the southern side of Prolin. So they, they're going to be more susceptible to, to the wind, to rougher seas. Uh, so you're probably not going to be able to swim directly from the beach and, or it's not going to be so enjoyable. Um, and you're going to get more seaweed kind of washing up on, on the beach. So May to September, I would say avoid staying on this side of Pralin. Stay on the northern side where you're going to be much more sheltered and you're going to have nicer swimming and you're not going to have seaweed on the beach. Mahi doesn't seem to be so badly affected by it um, because it's a bit more sheltered. So even when it doesn't matter if the wind's blowing from north or from south, most of the properties that we recommend, like the Constance, the Four Seasons, um, the Anatara Maya, they're, they're sheltered on this southern side. So despite the, the trade winds, because it's kind of, coming, kind of coming from the east as well, it's blowing up. It's kind of hitting this side of Mahi rather than this side, if that makes sense. Um, thank you for that. And since you mentioned the seaweed, is there a time of year that they're, they're more, it, they just, there's a bigger quantity of them present? Uh, well, it's all down to the winds again. So it just washes up on the beach when, when the winds are blowing. So um, again, so you won't have seaweed uh, coming onto the beach uh, on any of these beaches really on, on Mahe. Uh, no matter the time, it's just on that southern side of Prolin, May to September, you'll get a bit more coming. Uh, and then October, October to April, it comes to the northern side, uh, although it's a bit, you're sheltered by Curious a bit, so it's only going to be probably around there. And the southern side, there'll be, there won't be any seaweed. So um, yeah, it's really more of a problem May to September, and it's a problem on the southern side of Prolin, I would say. Thank you. Um, Carolina would like to know if clients are only based in Mahe, um, would it be possible to spend the day in Praelin or in, in Ladig? Yeah, definitely. And actually just on the subject of Cat Coco Ferry, uh, we usually recommend taking the Air Seychelles flight. And I know it is a bit more expensive, but for the sake of just a 15 minute journey rather than an hour and 10 and then the waiting and stuff, I think it's totally worth it because you can get to where you need to go so much quicker uh, it's easier. And also sometimes those crossings, if there is a bit of wind, it, it's not the smoothest. And um, I, I was okay, but I was with, uh, when, when I was out in a group, a couple of uh, the group I was with we started to feel a bit seasick towards, towards the end. And we were there in October. Um, um, but it, it can happen yeah, really from May to October, the seas are a bit rougher. And that crossing can be a bit rougher. So as a general rule, I, I think Offer the SA shells flight, and it, obviously, if it's too expensive, then we can do the cat cocoa. But uh, I would go to SA shells, and then of course, because it, it's only fifteen minutes, you could easily just hop across and visit my it, as a day trip, no problem. Uh, visit Pralin as a day trip, it's no problem. Um, if you were to take a private boat, would that be more expensive than the flight, and would you recommend that? Yeah, it probably would be more expensive than the flight. Um, but taking a private boat, I would do, you know, in terms if you want to do um, hire a yacht and go explore, because we do that as one of our excursions. And that's really nice. So uh, I, I would do the boat and use it as a sort of as a day trip to go and find little hidden beaches and spend the day on the boat. And that's that's really nice. Stay in the kind of sheltered coves and things. Fabulous. Pedro would like to know what is the most secluded and hidden gem in the whole of Seychelles. That, that question costs $500, uh, $500 by the way. <laughs> well, I, I have to say, I, I think for me, uh, just because I was there recently, uh, I, I would say that um, Cosmolido, you know that eco camp I was talking about? Um, I think because it's so remote and tricky to get to, 
I would say that's that is the most secluded. I mean, it's one of the most remote places I've ever been to. Uh, one of the most remote places in the world. But I can um, I can show you some quick holiday snaps from it just to give you a taste. Uh, but it was breathtaking, breathtakingly beautiful. And you're, there's only eight eco cabins on the island, so you're going to be. And this is actually an atoll of about twenty islands, so it's going to be you, maybe twenty other people, uh, in 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 the entire atoll maximum and then you, you, you're you're staying really with thousands of nesting birds and tiger sharks and loads of cool stuff um so yeah let me just uh i'll show you a quick picture of it and Possibly. in the meantime how do you get there so you would fly to alphonse and that's where most guests would stay and that's actually that's quite family friendly i saw like families mothers and daughters and dads going fishing and the mother's daughters doing excursions that's where most people go on. And then the slightly more hard coat people would then go on to Astove, which is another hour flight. And then you take a speedboat from Astove to Cosmolido, which is another hour. So it's about three hours traveling in total. But we broke it up quite nicely because we got to Astove and we had lunch in Astove. And I got to see a bit of Astove. And then I had lunch, a few drinks. And then, uh, then we went on for the speedboat crossing over to Cosmolido. So it was it was no problem, but uh, that was the best way of showing. Okay, cool. I'm just going to share my screen, and you can see uh, you can see. I, I won't take you long for it because guys. Uh, and remind me again, it's called called Cosmolito. Cosmolido, yeah. Cosmolido. Yeah, it's on, it's on an island called Wizard Island. So this is the sort of main uh, area which you turn up. Uh, the beaches here. I mean, you're completely. So yeah, this this is the main uh, tent uh, where guests stay, and that's a oh, one's common image. Once it clears, sorry about that. Anyways, there we go. Um, so that yeah, and you kind of sit around on those logs, and you, you, you in the tent. That's where they serve the meals. They have a chef, um, uh, and then yeah, amazing views. Um, we we are actually seeing lots of tiny pictures. Oh, okay. Uh, how do I make that bigger? Hmm. So I've gone to giant size. Um, okay, one second. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I know how to do it. There we go. Okay, sorry. That's that was my cabin. Can you see that? Yeah. Great. Okay, so that was my cabin. That's where you stay, and that's the eco cabin. Eight of those, air conditioned, and it's basically it's a shipping container. This is going to be converted into a luxury glamping, um, and it's completely sustainable because they can be removed. Uh, this is sort of the main camp area. Uh, these are the beaches, but there's just nobody around, um, so it's absolutely stunning. It's only actually open um, from until sort of April. And then it's, it closes from May to October, so it's, it's there's nobody there at all. This is the main tent area where you have your your lunch and your dinner, and there's a little bar there. Um, so yeah, it is a bit like more like a African safari camp, uh, but it's blue safari. So that most most people during the day they'll be going out fishing, um, but you can also go out and see amazing birds. So we actually kayaked over to some local islands where they have nesting booby birds. They're called. Um, so let me just. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> the sunsets are pretty amazing. Would would that be ideal for a scuba diver, or are there other yeah. areas? Yeah, amazing for scuba diving. I mean, they're all good for scuba diving. Like Alphonse and Astove are really good for scuba diving too. Um, okay, and would you consider Seychelles as a LGBTQ plus? I don't know what else. Yeah, definitely. What other yeah, letter it's, it's, comes back? Yeah. yeah, it's de it's uh it's definitely it's definitely positive. It's definitely um it's definitely a a really um welcoming place for LGBTQ. Fabulous. Um do you, does does entering Seychelles require a visa? Um yeah, you you fill out a 30-day landing card uh for for the visa. So, um yeah, it's it's done on done on the aircraft, and they, they've scrapped the PCR. They've scrapped all the testing facilities, so it's really easy to to visit. Great. So, as a reminder, if you're flying from Brazil, Turkish Airlines has the stopovers, which is very 
um, inviting. You can combine both destinations. Um, one last question, Thomas. If, if you were to pick one place, where would that be? Uh, I get if I, if the budget, if there, there was no budget, uh, yeah, I, pro I think Alphonse was my favorite, uh, place that I visited for, for the marine life and the snorkeling and that those like, cause the marine is, um, really like untouched. It's pristine and the, the, the coral is really colorful. Uh, so it's, it's really amazing. Um, and like we, we went swimming with like 30, 40 dolphins were just kind of went wow. past us and stuff. Uh, yeah, actually I can show you. There's no more embarrassing pictures, but I, I could show you some pictures from that as well. Um, but that was, it was, it's pretty tough to beat that. Um, and it, it, it's got an amazing lagoon as well. Um, other than, otherwise, I think on Mahe, um, I think the stove, sorry, uh, uh, Mango House is really, really nice. Uh, I really like Mango House and Um And... I think Six Senses or Passion is pretty tough to beat as well. Mm -hmm. For those who have more time, would you recommend a bit of an island hopping and what would be the ideal length of stay to really experience the whole deal? Yeah, I would. I think um, island hopping, I would do... Um, the classic one is doing maybe... Four nights on Mahe, three nights on Pralin. If you've got if you've got a week, I think that's plenty of time to do everything that uh, that Seychelles has to offer. Or you could combine like Mahe with um, an outer coral islands, like so you could do twin send of four seasons. But the classic is is at least one property on Mahe, like you could do yeah Mango House or something, and then go over to Pralin and do raffles or or uh, concerts, concerts. Oh yeah, concerts of Velia, concerts of the Maria. That's probably our most popular twin center state. Fabulous. So those were all the questions. Um, are you going to share anything with? Yes, I have got it here. And I'll just make sure I don't, uh, I, get, I share the right screen. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. Yeah. Can you see that? Or am I under? Not yet. Okay. We, well, we can see the, all the pictures and videos, but not. Got it. Uh, yeah, there we go. So this yeah. was just, um, I just went out with uh, some photographers and um, this is the lagoon around Alphonse. And uh, we just kept, so every time we saw, saw like a pod of dolphins, we were jumping in and. Um, oh, so you can actually jump in and swim with, swim, yeah. swim with them. Yeah. They're the, the wild dolphins. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Ah, beautiful. Do yeah, they interact it's... when you jump into the water or do they swim away? They do. Uh, it, it depends on the dolphin. Um, if they're, they're spinner dolphins, they tend to be a bit shy. But if they're um, bottlenose dolphins, they, yeah, they, they, they like to play. Wow. Beautiful. So, um, yeah, that's my, this was the villa. That's me with a gin and tonic um, showing off the beach. But it, that's Alphonse Island. So um, it's just very private. And that's the villa, the, uh, the beach villas are really nice. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. It was really, really amazing. The comments on the chat are all... Thank you. Wow. Impressive. I saw the pic. And, yeah. uh, you got to um, do it. <laughs> you got to do it. I'm, I'm with you there. Um, everyone, thank you for joining us. Please come to the next webinar on the Mauritius and the following one on the Maldives. This way you'll become an Indian Ocean specialist. Um, Rest assured, we will share with you the, the presentation and Thomas's contacts and Hummingbird's contacts. Um, they do have an online platform too. If you need to quickly check availability, um, but they also have the offline consultants based locally and within 
a closer time zone to Mexico and Brazil. So yeah, anything you need, I'm available. Jessica's available in Mexico and Thomas is always here to enlighten us. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Have Thanks, a nice guys. week ahead. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.